then replace this into our equation of energy here. So differentiation of this term is supposed to be equal to 0. So d by dy of that is equal to 0. Can you solve that? Of course. So if differentiation here is 0, that means everything inside is equal to a constant C1, right? And to be easy for integration, then I'm going to change dt here to be d of t minus t0. I can do that, right? You should also notice that NAY here now is a constant. It is constant according to our equation of continuity. On Wednesday, we already determined that flux of A is constant along y direction. Just like flux of B and B y is 0. They are all 0. They are constant. All right. So this is ordinary differential equation. It can be written in form of dy by dx plus function of x times y equal to another function of x. This kind of function has a solution. And the solution can be found from your appendix, appendix C in the textbook. So as long as you can rearrange the ordinary differential equation to get into this form, you will definitely get the solution. OK? So in this case, if you compare between these two equations, you get that function of x here, function fx, is minus NAY CP of A over K. Right? If you divide minus K from here to there, you get fx to be this number. Of course, y here turns to be temperature. And x in this case is y. A little bit confusing. No, I'm sorry. y is t minus t0. For g, gx, even though in, in, in this form it's supposed to be function of x, but it, it is not necessarily so. In this case, for, this, for our case here, gx is c1 minus c1 over k. OK? So if you can rearrange your equation to get this form, the solution for this particular form of ordinary differential equation would be in terms of this equation. And don't worry about remembering this kind of solution. It will be given to you in the examination as an appendix. But we will not give you only one form. We will give you several forms. So therefore, you need to, I mean, as long as you rearrange your equation, you get to some particular form, and you get the solution. Okay. Now, if you compare. From here to there, 
y in this solution form is our x is our t minus t0 to the exponential of integral f dx. Our f is this form, right? Minus up front and minus here in f cancel out. So you have integral integral here dx x now is y dy and then inside you have similar things times minus c1 over k dy plus c2. Let me write it again here. If I let R to be NAYCPA over K, you get the equation, the solution of the equation to be like this. Okay. Keep in mind that R here is consisting of three terms, flux, CP, K. CP and K are constant for sure, but flux here is also constant. This flux is this one indeed, is a lot of things, but everything here is constant. So it doesn't matter how many terms you have you can treat it as a constant, okay? So R here is constant. Integral, exponential integral R dy, you get e, R, e to the power of R y, right? So that would give you e to the power of R y. In here, keep C1 over K like this. This term, when you integrate it, you get minus Ry as a power of exponential here. And then you integral e to the power of minus Ry, you get e to the, minus, to the power of minus Ry back over minus R, right? And then C2. Then it can multiply the first term into the parenthesis and you get two terms combined now we have two variables c1 and c2 and therefore you need two boundary conditions what are they These two boundaries should tell you temperature at two different positions. In our system, we have y equal to 0 and y equal to delta to be boundaries. Let's say that boundary condition 
at y equal to 0, let's call temperature there t is 0. Okay? If, remember, right now, in this part of the equation, t0 is reference temperature. And this reference temperature can be chosen as we like. We can choose it to be 0 degree. We can choose it to be room temperature, right? But in this case, I'm going to choose this T0 to be temperature of the wall. So that when I have y equal to 0 as our boundary, temperature of the fluid is supposed to be equal to temperature to the wall. That temperature is supposed to cancel out, give 0 here. It will be easier for us to do so, OK? So in this case, you will get 0 equal to C1 over Kr plus C2 e to the power of 0, you get Z2. Another boundary condition is at y equal to delta, t equal to t delta. And then you get t delta subtracted by t0 equal to c1 over kr plus c2 e to the power of r delta. OK? So once you have two equations, two unknowns, then you can solve for C1 and C2, plug it back to this equation, you get temperature profile. Straightforward, simple as that. OK? And the solution, you get something like this. OK, any question? You should see or you should notice from here, this is very obvious, that the result of the, the temperature profile here is nonlinear. Can you see that? It is so obvious, right? This is nonlinear temperature profile. And the term that makes everything nonlinear is this Na. As long as if the flux, the mass flux is zero, if you have only one single species, there will be no diffusion. If though there is no diffusion, Na becomes zero. So if Na is zero, this term will become what? One, right? So you have one minus y and one minus delta, and then everything turns to be linear. So, as I said earlier, the movement of the molecules by diffusive energy transport makes the temperature profile nonlinear.